and welcome to a new video. So today's video is a semi-continuation from my last video, but you don't need to watch that one first for this one to make sense. But if you do feel like watching it, you can click the link up above, or you can head down to the description and click the link there. So without further ado, let's get started. With my rose gown complete, it is time to work on part two of my project, and that is the prince's outfit. So this is kind of what I have going on right now. I'm going to be using, well I guess first here's my material. This is a faux silk taffeta that I got from, I think it was Rocco Fabrics in Richmond. Um, so it has a little shimmer to it, which I absolutely love. There you go, you can kind of see the sparkle in it. Uh, so I have eight meters of that. And for my patterns, I'm going to be drafting my own. Kind of. I guess I'm enlarging them from this book. So I have the men's 17th and 18th century costume cut in fashion. So I'm going to be using their pattern for the breeches. And then I'm also using oh, costume close up um, for the construction techniques. And then my third book that I'm using is the cut of men's clothing. And on page 72, I'm going to be trying to enlarge the vest and coat from this pattern. So my goal for tonight is just to get these patterns enlarged and then hopefully I can enlarge it to my size. I think this one's pretty close to my size. I haven't actually checked the measurements on this one yet. Um, so it'll just be some minor alterations on this pattern, which will be good. And this one, I am actually changing the belt on this one. They just use a straight belt, but I really like the belt in this book. So for these breeches, I really like this waistband that they have. Um, it is quite a bit wider and it's more of a shaped breech pattern versus just a straight one. Also, this one will make it easier for alterations in the future, which is Good. Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate how many pockets these pants have? I mean, they're like the cargo pants of the 18th century. Not only do they carry a lot of stuff, but they also look good. I love 18th century men's pants. Yes, you have diaper butt, but you know what? You get amazing pocket space, which is something that is sorely lacking in our modern clothing. Okay, so this looks completely ridiculous right now. Um, this is the waistcoat with all the fabric bunched up underneath it for the transforming part of the dress. I thought the tool would compress more, but that is not the case. It may actually still compress more once I've figured out like the buttons and everything and everything's tightened because it does it does slightly compress, but yeah, it's um, definitely a lot larger than I was hoping it would be. So I'm going to make a mock-up of the waistcoat quick and then see if that actually works or not and if it'll compress it any tighter. Um, I also started making uh, or patterning out the coat but I decided to kind of hold off on that until I've got the waistcoat figured out just because there's a lot of changes I have to be sure on for the coat uh, before I can continue with that. So I think just getting the waistcoat sorted first will help me figure out how roomy the actual jacket needs to be. Um, Shape-wise, you can really see... <laughs> The tool's just really, like, it, the tool will still shrink. I could, will probably be able to tighten it more than I think I can right now. Because um, the tool is definitely wanting to puff out. Because that's what tool likes to do. So I also think I could probably change the positioning of the tool as well. Because right now it's just pinned in place. Also, 
this is the bottom of the corset right here. So looking at how this goes, you will be able to see this fabric from underneath the waistcoat, but I kind of planned it so this would hopefully blend in, which is why I added that yoke from the other video. So with that in mind, I'm just going to start my mock-up of the waistcoat and hopefully it will all turn out. Also, the nice thing about this waistcoat is that it will have lacing in the back, so I can really loosen it off for when I have the tool bit underneath. And then when I'm wearing it by itself, I will just be able to tighten it in. I'm going to put this down and get started on the waistcoat mock-up. And then once that is done, I'm going to work on the actual coat because it is seven days until the deadline of the challenge. So we'll see how this goes. So this looks kind of silly at the moment, <laughs> but I think once I add some structure in to the actual coat, I'm hoping that'll smooth that out. It's not looking exactly how I envisioned it, but I think I should be able to make it work. So usually when I'm planning quick changes for a theater outfit, it has to be planned before the actual construction begins because that way you can kind of figure out how you're going to construct the garment. And so I am trying to do that where I'm planning how the quick change is going to happen, but I also want this to be able to switch it over to a garment that I can use without the quick change. So it's trying to combine those two constructions together that is kind of uh, mind boggling sometimes, but I think once I actually figure that out, it'll be a lot smoother. We'll see how this goes. I'm excited. I, I really hope this comes out how I'm planning. Um, but yeah, I don't think I will actually, well, we'll see if I actually get this done in time. Never mind even adding decoration to it. I had a whole bunch of plans for decoration, but alas, I am not the best uh, at figuring out my timing. So yeah, we'll see. And I can always add decorations after the competition as well. With my waistcoat mock-up done, I finished drafting the breeches and juice decor slash outer coat and then cut them out for a mock-up. Um, so this is my mock-up. So far I have my coat, my waistcoat, and my breeches. Um, I think they fit pretty good. I just have the one sleeve on so I can test that. Because I have the dress hidden under here, this is a little bit looser than it would be. So after this project is done, I may actually take it in a little more in the back just to deal with that looseness. But other than that, I think it's a pretty good fit. So I don't have the waistcoat pinned right now but I already checked that and it fit nicely and then my breeches aren't too bad. I did have to take up the leg about two inches so I've just pinned that up so if you look at this side this is obviously not pinned it's quite loose around the leg but as soon as I take it up the two inches it falls right where it needs to go on my leg which is good. So other than that, that is good. The bum, I've actually realized I need to add more room in the bum. There is room back there, but it doesn't have quite the look that I'm going for. So I'm going to add a little bit more room to that and then I should be able to cut everything out. I'm just gonna switch hands so you can see the sleeve. So the sleeve is a two-piece sleeve that's cut with the curve. There's a little bit of funny bunchiness going on in the back, but that is partly because I need room in the arm to be able to bend my arm. So yeah, that is, at least in my case, is unavoidable. I may turn the sleeve head ever so slightly because if you see, Right there, there's that crease. Um, and that I think is from 
it not hanging correctly. So if I pull this like ever so much that way, it should get rid of the crease. Um, but I'm not too worried about it. And I think if I keep my arm bent, it won't matter. <laughs> I've got a little under three days to sew all of these. I think I'm gonna focus on the waistcoat and coat first because I can kind of cheat the breeches. Yeah, I, I still need the breeches, obviously, to complete the ditto suit, but I can kind of cheat them for photos if I don't get them done in time. So that is the plan. With all the mock-ups complete, I transfer the changes to the patterns and then began cutting out the real fabric. First, I cut out a layer of cotton for flat lining, and then I cut out the faux silk. Once all the pieces were cut out, I flat lined them together. The larger pieces I did by hand because I wanted to make sure that they didn't move, and the smaller pieces I did on the machine. so I kind of got a bit carried away there. Um, this is the back of the waistcoat. This is just the cotton fabric that I'm using for the um, backing of the fabric. What I did is I just grabbed or uh, I just cut out some of the faux silk and attached that to the bottom half of the waistcoat in case the coat flips up at all when I'm actually wearing the other coat. And then I just stitched it together. Um, so I cut out two of the back piece and then just the outer portion of the waistcoat has the back or the black attached to the back of it. And then I just stitched that up. And next I need to add the front of the waistcoat. With the right sides together, I pinned the front and the back of the waistcoat together and stitched up the shoulder and side seams. After I finished stitching up all these seams, I then set it aside and began working on the outer coat. I began by pinning up the back seam of the coat. The skirt of the coat is actually left open along the back and that is how it was done historically. And then with right sides together, I stitched the front and back pieces together. Once the body of the coat was done, I set it aside and began working on the facings. I'm not 100% sure facings were actually used on men's coats or clothing during this time, but as I mentioned earlier, I am using more modern finishes on this suit. With the facings in place, I began working on the sleeves. 
the sleeves themselves are fairly straightforward for a two-piece sleeve and they came together quite easily. Once the outer layers were sewn and pressed, I started on the cuffs. I used a faux silk layer, a cotton layer, and a lining layer of fabric for the cuffs for a nice clean finish on both the inside and the outside. Once those were done, I then whipped up the lining for the sleeves and then laid out all the pieces to put them together. Now this is a technique that might not work for everyone, but to make sure that I put the lining in correctly, I like to put the lining on my arm and then pull the outer sleeve over top of that to make sure it all lines up correctly and that I haven't accidentally switched them. And once I know that the lining is correct, I then turn it inside out and pin it along the lower edge for a nice clean finish. After finishing up the second sleeve, I then pinned and stitched them to the coat. So I've made quite a bit of progress on the Justecor and waistcoat. The next thing that I need to do is attach the snaps to this um, I guess waistcoat. I've already attached the buttons. They are just quickly sewn on. They're not really that secure at all. It's more just something just to tack them on there. Um, and then that way if I do decide to change this to something that is not quick changed, then I just can remove them and add the buttonholes in there. So for the quick change, I have bought some snap tape. So the next thing I'm just going to do is whip this into the vest. And then I think this is done. Still do want to add embroidery to it, but I just don't have time for the competition that I'm entering. So once the competition, once I've gotten pictures of this for the competition, I'm most likely going to add the embroidery afterwards because uh, I just think it would be pretty. I think I'm going to do that and then go from there. The snap tape was super easy to add. I simply stitched it in place with a running stitch, making sure not to catch the right side of the fabric as I sewed. Last night was a very late one. <laughs> um, I think I was up until around 5, 5.30, just trying to finish everything up and take photos and actually do my write-up for my entry for the competition. Uh, but it's all submitted. I got it in. Um, oh my goodness. So I think I'm going to chill for the rest of the day. Um, maybe catch up on some stuff that I was neglecting. Uh, First, I'm going to enjoy this coffee. <laughs> I ended up taking about a three week break from this project to edit my rose video and to recover in general. But with renewed vigor, it was time to tackle the next step of the project and that was the buttons. 
I knew I wanted to add some type of rose to the coat in some way, shape, or form, so I decided that embroidered buttons was the way to go. The design itself was fairly simple and is just a combination of satin stitches and the stem stitch. The embroidery for each button averaged to about 8 minutes once I got the hang of it. I'm almost finished embroidering these buttons. Um, I need, I think, 26, and so I've got about five more to do. Um, they've taken a little while, but it's it's coming out really cute. Like, let's see if that'll focus. There we go. You can kind of see it. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. Anyways, I love them, how they're turning out. But before I continue with the buttons, I want to talk to you actually about the buttons that I'm using. So... These are the buttons that I'm using. They are the kind that you can put your own material over. They're very useful. I think these are the Prim brand, P-R-Y-M, and they are the 29 millimeters. So with these ones, you put your fabric on it and then this slides over top and it keeps everything in place. Now there are other types of buttons you can get that are like these, but I prefer this brand because this piece can't pop off because it is attached like that. And so when it's sewn, this piece can't move off. There are other buttons that are fabric covered buttons you can get that are like this. They have this little piece stuck to this piece instead of being stuck to this one. And so these ones I find are actually more likely to lose the fabric off the button or to have this button pop off. I know you can glue them in, but I've never been a big fan of that. So I have a couple of these still in my stash, but I'm just not a fan of them. Uh, so if you are looking to do self-covered buttons, I definitely recommend looking for the type where the little knobby bit is attached to the actual main button because I find they just stay on. So yeah, you can see the difference there. Also these have teeth that help grab the fabric while these ones are just discs. So anyways I'm gonna get back to embroidery and uh, then we'll start putting these buttons together. Alrighty I have finished embroidering all the buttons so I think there's 26 of them. <laughs> um, anyways this one this was my first one and I didn't know what I was doing so it doesn't really look like a rose I guess it's more like a poppy and then as they progressed they slowly and slowly turned more rose like. I think this one's my favorite. It's kind of hard to see because the black is making everything really blown out. Um, and I, I really like how that one turned out. Oh there we go there we go that one that one's my favorite because it like looks like a rose. Next up is I have to cut all these out and put them on the buttons. So I have a lot of buttons here and then I have my little template to actually trace around the size of the buttons to cut them out. So I'm hoping these ones have enough room. They should be fine. Yeah, it should be fine. Because when I was just color transferring them, I, <laughs> I traced around the button like that just to get the actual shape of it. So yeah, this should be fine. These ones are a lot more spaced out. because A few of my roses did end up being slightly too close in the end, but I did make it work. Once I had traced out all the roses, it was time to cut them out. Now, looking back at it, I do wish I had added some type of backing fabric to the buttons because I discovered later on that you could see the silver button through the faux silk. And while it isn't the end of the world, it is something that I need to keep in mind for next time. Once 
one button down, 25 more to go. It's done! <laughs> so that was roughly about an hour and a half, maybe two hours of work. I don't know. I got faster the more I did. So there are 26 of them here. And they are not perfectly centered. Like, you can see some of them are wildly not centered. But I love how they look. And I'm excited to start putting them on. Uh, so, so this was my first one. You can see... That does not look like a rose but i still like it and i'm keeping it and i'm putting it on my jacket because it reminds me that you slowly improve the more you do it so i just have these pinned on here right now but i made a mistake and i'm missing one button or i'm short one button i guess so i have the buttons on the cuffs on the back Again, they're all just pinned on right now. So I'm just missing one button, but that should take me about 20 minutes to make. And then I can add the buttons to it. Okay, so it is, let's see, 11.30 p.m. right now, and I'm just about to get started on the breeches. So I've watched both Sosteen's video and Nicole's video. Uh, if you don't know which ones those are, I will link them down below. They've made it fairly clear. I think I figured it all out now, so I'm gonna try and put these together. My method, or I guess my pattern, is slightly different than theirs, uh, but we shall see how this goes. Also, a uh, heads up, this is more of a theatrical version of how these are being put together. I'm not claiming historical accuracy in any way, so hopefully it uh, still turns out well in the end. I think once the fall front is in, it will be fairly straightforward. Uh, the pockets also might be slightly confusing, but it's mostly the fall front that I'm kind of worried about. So we'll see how this goes. The first step was flatlining all the pieces. And then I surged the edges so I wouldn't have to worry about anything fraying. This process ended up taking me a few days, but once it was done, I began putting them together starting with the front pieces. Once I had stitched up the front of the breeches, I then added the fall front lining to the inside of the breeches, and that stopped just past the fall front line. From there, I added what I believe is called the welt piece to both sides of the front fall. Now, when sewing this piece, it needs to be sewn with great precision, because if it's not sewn precisely to a certain point, it won't be easy to turn. Next, I very carefully cut along the line I just stitched, making sure I didn't actually cut into the stitching. And then I folded over the welt piece, encasing the raw edge I just cut, and pinned it in place. And then I secured that piece with a stitch in the ditch on the right side of the fabric. With half of one side of the fall front finished, I then carefully folded under the other side of the fall front about a quarter of an inch and pressed it in place and then I pinned the bare to that and then carefully stitched in place on the right side of the fabric with a very clean top stitch. Thank you. 
And then to secure all the layers together, I top stitched along the point of the welt. And then once I finished this, I repeated everything on the other side. And then it's time to start working on the pockets. With the right sides together, I pinned and stitched the first pocket piece about 5 inches along the top and around 3 inches along the side. And this is to create the opening of the pocket. Then I clipped the fabric almost to the seam and turned it right side out and then gave it a very good press. Then I pinned the back of the pockets along the free edge of the pocket that's currently attached to the breeches and then stitched it in place. And with that, the hard part of the breeches is done. I really hope you could see this, but I think I was successful. So I have my front flap, the under bits, which I think are the bearers, and then I have my pocket. And this pocket goes all the way down to here. So I have one on either side. These will get buttoned in up there to keep that in place. And next up, I just have to attach the front and back together for the breeches, and then I can attach the waistband. And then I'm like really, really close to being done these. So that's exciting. Anyways, uh, I'm going to continue with this and hopefully I can get it done by the end of today. Spoiler alert, I did not get it done by the end of the day. In fact, it took me several more days to complete them. Oh, I love my wishful thinking self. Once I finished sewing up these side seams of the breeches, I then finished the placket opening along the bottom edge. Okay, so I have finished sewing up the sides of the breeches. And what I have to do next is attach the waistband to the breeches. And then once the waistband is in, uh, I can do another fitting just to make sure that everything is looking good. And once that's done, I can finish up the bottom of the breeches. So I'm really excited how this is going. Um, I really hope that it still fits from when I did the mock-up, so because it is a different fabric um, and it will behave differently. But fingers crossed, this is a faux silk taffeta, so it has a little bit of a stretch to it. So it should be fine, theoretically. Um, but yeah, so it's just time to get the waistband in, do the fitting, and then go from there. Before attaching the waistband, I first added two rows of gathering stitches along the top edge of the back of the breeches so they could be gathered in to fit the waistband. I found it much easier to pin the front of the waistband to the front of the breeches first, and then once I got to the side mark, I then gathered in the remaining amount of the breeches into the waistband. After I finished attaching both sides of the waistband, I then quickly added a back gore to the back seam of the breeches so I could make them adjustable. This is a historical technique. 
After inserting the gore, I then turned under the edges and whipped the waistband in place for a nice clean finish on the interior. And with the waistband done, it's time to add the buttons. There is a grand total of 16 buttons on these breeches. Four on the waistband, two on the fall front, two on the pockets, and four along each side of the legs. And because I don't have knee buckles yet, I also added a ribbon along the bottom of the breeches to keep them tight. And to finish them off, I added the lacing to the center back for adjustability. Overall, I am really happy with how this came out. I would love to still add more embroidery to it and maybe some pockets, but time was short this time around so that is something I can always do in the future. Thank you so much for joining me on this crazy little adventure. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you're new here and you liked what you saw, I hope you'll stick around. So until next time, I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. For those who are asking, here's the process of how I got the dress under the suit. I have only done this a few times, so each time it took around roughly 10 minutes.